Learning the map is generally rewarding in games, and RMC 14, or Space Station 14, is no exception. Whether it's for your own use, or you're mapping for a server, it's just a nice thing to have. So how do you do it? Well, today I'm going to regurgitate what I know about mapping here. Please note that what I am talking about might not apply to other forks. This is a guide for RMC 14 mapping, so it'll cover RMC. I am also not the most experienced mapper, so if you have any feedback or things I missed, please do leave those in the comments for other people. For the most up-to-date and reliable information, I would direct you to the mapping channel on the RMC14 Discord server, and they're pretty much wizards in regards to this stuff. So without a further ado, I'll be pacing the itinerary of the stuff we'll be talking about on the screen. First, before anything else starts, we need you to set up a dev environment. The process I used was as follows. First, download and install .NET SDK 9. After that, pick up Python 3 and install that as well. When you've got both of those, get GitHub Desktop, and you may need to set up an account for this. Once you have GitHub on your desktop, pull it up, go to the Add button, clone the repository, and paste the GitHub link for RMC14. All of these links are going to be down below. When you've had all the downloaded files that you need, open the folder, and run the Python file named run this, then run client and run server. If you want a map, which is what we'll be doing today, you should get the run server tools instead. After that, you have your own dev environment set up. Well, you could do pretty much anything with this, but we didn't come here to test any of that junk. We're here to map, so let's get on over to the mapping tools. So, to make a new map, we just gotta run one command the mapping command, followed by a number of your choice, and it will generate a completely new map, and by default kick you to the dedicated mapping screen. I personally don't use this screen as it's a good bit restrictive. If you want to swap things over to a ghost mapping, you should try running the command scene gameplay state, and the garnish will come right off. Saving your map is also critically important, especially if autosave for one reason or another craps out on you. I recommend saving prolifically. To save your map, open the console, type save map, the ID you're using for your map, so for example, 100, the location you want to save your maps to, and then the map name followed by .yml. As for where you want to keep the maps, it's up to you. I personally made a dedicated folder in my GitHub clones data folder, which stores all of my maps. Saving your map will automatically overwrite any file that already has a name you're trying to save your file to. So, for example, if you name a file Illinois, saving a map to Illinois will wipe out the old file. If you want to play it safe, I recommend every once in a while adjusting the file name just slightly before you add big areas. I've wiped out literally entire buildings by complete accident, and I had no save files to fall back on. There's no easy undo button in space station mapping, so your saves are literally your saviors. Loading your map is also similar. Open your console up, type load map, the ID you're planning on using for this map, where you're grabbing the file from, and then the file name. Once your map is loaded, you could teleport to it using the F7 admin panel. With that out of the way, we can start talking about tiles. Tiles are the floor for your map and your most basic building tool. You grab them from the tile menu, of course, and it comes with a useful little search bar. As with everything, you want to try and make sure you avoid upstream tiles to prevent art style clashes. You should also keep in mind that some tiles are removable with a crowbar or will be destroyed upon detonation of explosives. Other tiles, such as grass or rose, will survive detonations. The third thing to keep in mind is that some tiles might count as diggable surfaces, which allows for the filling of sandbags. Meanwhile, some other tiles will block xeno weeds completely from spreading, so keep all of these things in mind when you plant them down. When mapping down floor tiles, always make sure you start either on top of another floor tile or right next to it as placing one in the empty space, isolated all by itself, will just lead to the creation of a completely new grid, which could complicate saving and lead to various unforeseen consequences. I found mapping out a swathe of tiles and then adjusting them as I work on them works pretty alright for me. Admittedly, there's also a lot of tiles. I found that typing in a certain color, such as beige or green, 
helps. Other keywords might be things like sterile. Typing the prefix CM or RMC will also loosen your tile options down to the ones that RMC uses. In addition, you're also able to mass place tiles by pressing Control, and you're able to place tiles in straight lines by pressing Shift. The Entity menu is the largest and probably the most important of the build menus. It stores walls, firearms, decorations, and a million other things, so this section is going to be a bit longer. The first thing to note is that upstream asset use submerged tiles is discouraged, but with redoubled importance. The most striking example of this being a problem was a story where somebody constructed a upstream cyborg on LV due to upstream part vendors still being present on the map. As such, you should avoid things such as upstream walls, vendors, and items like the plague. Even cosmetics like posters are also discouraged due to art style clashes. Very few exceptions exist, for example, upstream food, we use a lot of that, so it's not really going to be a big deal if you map in a grilled cheese sandwich. If you're ever uncertain if something is RMC safe or not, uh, you could check an item and see if it has the CM or RMC prefixes. Someday they're probably going to standardize in one of those, but for now, both of them work. Searching CM or RMC in the search bar as well is also a great way to ensure you're using something that's RMC safe. Some good examples are CM wall or RMC wall to bring up walls, CM window or RMC window for their respective counterparts, CM table for tables, CM crate for all sorts of boxes, CM and RMC airlock for various doors, CM light for lights, CM poster for posters, and RMC prop is also great for a billion different props. Uh, some items also might have internally backwards names. A metal crate might be internally listed as crate metal. You can also, of course, just search the display name of an asset. For example, there's several assets named Rockwall. So let's say you want a Solaris Rockwall, though, in particular. You could search Rockwall and get a bunch of them and sift through them, or you could type in CM Wall Solaris and you'll get the Rockwell that you want in particular. Well, that's good at all, but what about placing assets? Placing items in the world is easy. Click on the menu, grab an asset that you want to put down, and then click on a tile where it's going to be placed. Right-clicking will deselect whatever you're currently planting. And there's also several placement modes. By default, it's going to be on standard placement, which will change placement mode depending on what you're putting down. Usually, it'll just snap things per tile. This is useful for things such as walls um, and things that you want to be centered. The other useful thing that I love using is free place, which lets you place an item pretty much in any way you want, assuming that it doesn't automatically snap by default. This is absolutely great for things such as props like crates, posters, or mirrors, but less good if you want to have a precise measure on what you're placing, such as something like a wall. Covering this again, pressing shift allows you to draw lines, while control lets you map in wide spaces. This is also great for mass filling areas such as mountains. Pressing P, meanwhile, while hovering over an asset, be it a wall, floor, or a gun, will copy the asset, and it's just handy in general. Note, though, that it will not copy invincible walls. Hey, editing loops here. Uh, while I'm making this video and collecting my footage, I think they changed it so that invincible walls can be deleted and they can be copied by pressing P. So, yay. Deleting assets is also really easy. You just press the erased option and you'll be able to delete stuff. Drag deletes can also be done by holding down control. Also, finally, uh, when you're mapping, you should, unless there's a very good exception, avoid do not map assets outside of something like an inaccessible easter egg. This is usually affixed to items which might break things or are otherwise unusable or just in general not a good thing to have in your map. Exceptions for maybe the lights, but don't tell Crow I said that because he'll get really mad and crucify me in front of the PvE players. Decals are cosmetic and usually are added in to add extra polish to your map. You need warning lines? They got you covered. How about bloodstains? Check. Mud or grime is also readily available. Checking off upstream decals will also give you access to upstream decals. 
Duh. Uh, plenty of them are actually usable. For example, the crayon icons are pretty much the exact same. I'm also fairly sure that Hybrissa uses some upstream dirt decals around it. Checking off the snap to tile does exactly what it says it does. Your sprite will now snap based on the tile rather than being free placed, which is perfect for things such as warning labels or decals that have multiple parts. Custom colors also allow you to use the RGB settings and the opacity settings. Maybe you want to make a decal more subtle by reducing the opacity. It could help with that. One trick that I found useful is reusing the mudstain decal and reducing the opacity so it turns into a very handy grime texture. Decals are excellent for making areas feel like they're lived in and can arguably make or break an area. A respectable sidewalk can turn into a filthy alleyway, and bloodstains could be used to create the implication of a previous fight, death, or torture. Use them liberally. Finally, uh, the decal menu is also the most stubborn and it's most functional when you've ensured that no other menus are open because it doesn't really like that for some reason. Next up on our docket is areas. Areas in RMC 14 are RMC's way of telling a couple of things. They determine if an area experiences weather, like rain, if it could be orbital bombarded, if mortars could be used, if people could pair drop in it, if people could extract things, and most importantly, power. That one is easily the most relevant here. Firstly, to actually place areas, you need to be able to see them. So go to the console and type areas colon load, then show markers. This will allow you to see, place, copy, and delete areas. I'm not really capable of teaching you how to make your own, as of current, but just know it's fine to reuse an area if your map is like a one-off map or for personal use only. If you don't know the properties of an area you're placing, right-click on it, then go to variable view, then go to Components, and look inside the Area Components. You'll be able to see all the actual stuff it does that way. This is particularly important if you want weather. Make sure you check this before you fill your entire map with an area that does not allow weather. As for areas and power, the most important thing, power in RMC14 is actually entirely area-based. Wires do not matter even remotely. Firstly, an area should have an area power controller and a power source. Usually, this power source is either a geothermal or a fusion generator. But wait, what if you do a building that has multiple different areas and you want power for all of them with just one generator room? That's simple. For each area in the building, put down a generator. Then simply copy the area you're using for that section of the building and plant that over the generator. Generators aren't supposed to be moved or walked on, so people are unlikely to notice this legally. In addition, if you want your generator to be functional when the map starts, make sure to jam a power cell inside, otherwise it's going to start out being broken and need repairs. Finally, areas also determine tactical map colors. You can see what code they're using in the variable view as well. Also, tac map labels. They don't really warrant their own section, so I'll mention them here. Just search tactical map and make sure show markers is on, then once you place them down, edit the warp point component. This pulls double duty of giving players a warp point and labeling the area when you look at it on your tack map. If your map doesn't have a tack map, put on a planet component and a tactical map component on the grid. <coughs> Teleporters are related to areas in that you need to turn on show markers to actually see them. Uh, when you plant a teleporter marker, open variables and head to the teleporter component. Under the adjust, you're able to punch in an X and a Y coordinate, which will put you either one of those directions. If you want a bit of a hand, though, for measuring this out, press F3 and look at your positioning debug. It'll give you some rough coordinates, and you're able to grab where you want your teleporter to go and the location of your teleporter, and then you subtract the difference. Punch the numbers in, and you're able to test it just by moving into your teleporter, which is very handy. Teleporters have all sorts of use cases. Maybe you want to add a basement or a second floor to your map, or a fall that drops somebody into a cave. Just make sure you properly disguise them to maintain the illusion, and don't make your teleporter locations overlap, because then that's going to lead to people looping. Ladders, meanwhile, are much easier. First, you put down two ladders. Go into variable view for them, and in the ladder component, ensure that both ends of your ladder share an ID. 
Once your map is initiated, just test the ladder by climbing it. As a side note, you could add these ladder components to non-ladder objects. Maybe you want to simulate climbing a tree or crawling down a sewer grate? Just make sure you pick something that is indestructible, as otherwise you're able to break your ladder completely. And while I can mention it, podlocks work pretty much the exact same as ladders. Place your shutters or your podlock, and then place your button. In the podlock, you go to the pod door component and set an ID. Then in the button, edit the door button component and make it the exact same ID. Assuming both of them are powered, this should work fine. Initiating your map is the last thing we'll cover, and it's fairly simple. Type the command map init and then your map's number. So for example, type map init 100. Once you do this, everything in your map will start acting as it would in game. Doors can now be opened and closed. Power will function normally. Random attachments, if applicable, will be put on your spawned weapons, and a whole lot more. It's critical not to initiate your map until you've first saved it properly, as you can't uninitiate a map. You may need to initiate your map several times to ensure things such as power are working or that your ladders are actually laddering. And if you want to get back to mapping with an uninitiated map, then try reloading your last save onto a new number. Or you could just do what I do and completely restart your dev environment. Whatever works best for you. As another note, uh, if you happen to place a initiated item in an uninitiated map, your saving completely breaks. The easiest way to sabotage yourself is spawning an item in the starting dev environment, you know, when you get in, and then accidentally placing that in an uninitiated map. When this happened to me, I nearly lost an entire hour of work. So don't do that. So those are all the basic steps. There isn't really that much else for me to say other than you should probably go out and start actually using this knowledge. If you're just starting out, I recommend a very simple project. Try making a house your character might live in, for example, or something like a bar. If you're feeling comfortable with that, then maybe you could start going on more advanced things. For my first map, Wisconsin, I just started with a bar before I progressively sprawled into mapping an entire stretch of highway, and it was fun the whole way through. Oh, also, make sure to square your maps. It's fun on all the paint tiles in any direction, but when you're ready to finally ship the map and make it playable, make it a rectangle and then apply the orange Colonial Marines walls around the corners, just to make sure they're properly obscured with something like fog or rock walls. Either of those really work. If this guide helped you somehow, or if you found it interesting, then I very humbly ask that you like the video, or if you're feeling more generous, subscribe for more helpful videos. I put that last one in quotation marks. Now, uh, have a good day, and happy mapping, Marines.